Hi folks, hopefully you can hear me. Um, I know it's a bit late, but I've uh, been wanting to do this all day, but I've been busy. So I've got a bit of a head-to-head uh, -to -head today, and I thought, do you know what, I'll do it live. Answer some comments uh, whilst I'm uh, doing this. It says I've been live for 2 minutes and 21 seconds, which I haven't. I've only just pressed start. I think it's once you've created it. It just comes up. So let me just get my comments ready if I receive any, because I think most people are going to bed at this point. Fucking hell, here we go. So, God, what is going on here? I fucking hate technology. All right, Craig, how you doing, buddy? Uh, of course. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, going to dedicate this live review to uh, to my closest and mostest Craig aka the Camp Beer Reviews the Camp Beer Reviews <laughs> um, and uh, the wonderful Lucy so uh, and dedicate to each and every one of you wonderful folks now I hate having to use this phone because, like, watch, because of this shit happening all the time, where they the lighting just keeps fading. It doesn't, oh, it does my absolute tits in. But, um, yeah, I hope you can hear me, uh, because I don't know if you're watching uh, Adam from uh, Mersey Beer's um, live stream for the after party, but I was having an absolute fucking nightmare <coughs> with my sound because i use my uh my bluetooth headphones which have a built-in speaker but for some reason it just doesn't want to work properly anymore so this will have to do so please let me know in the comments um what the sound is like i would use my iPhone because I don't have this same problem but um, I've been getting bombarded with messages from uh, a friend from work pretty much all day so it'll just keep interrupting the stream I don't know if if I do it on my iPhone which I'd have to do it through Safari anyway um, because for some reason even with Google Chrome installed it just doesn't want to fucking work so yeah I was having a bit of a nightmare and Cheers, Craig, uh, for letting me know about that. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to class this as uh, my next uh, review for tomorrow. Um, I mean, I've got loads of beer reviews on the MacBook ready to be uploaded, and I do upload in bulk. But I thought, yeah, rather than do an even longer than usual review when I do one can, because I'm doing two. I thought, we'll do something a little bit different to a bit of a live stream. So, uh, yeah, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, December the 2nd, we're out with this uh, lockdown into essentially another lockdown. But we're just... See, I got this t-shirt yesterday, right? And it's extra large, but it's a little bit big. So it's got that sort of thing where it makes you look a little bit pregnant when you're just wearing the t-shirt on its own. Um, so I might just put my jacket back on <laughs> because <laughs> moment of being self-conscious, but oh well, such is life. But um, yeah, I've got a comment from Window Beer Reviews, Thomas. Hi, Thomas. Hope you're doing well, my friend. Um, I said I was going to use my phone for comments, but I can actually see here, but I'll keep referring to this. It's just a bit easier. So you're going to have this as basically, although I don't know, because I don't know how much time I'll have tomorrow to actually get stuff uploaded in time for the day. Just not that it matters, but anyway. So, today, and by the way, there's no links in the description as I'm recording this, uh, just because I didn't want to take too long setting up, because it'd be about 10 o'clock before I was even live. And uh, see, I'm not the I'm the only person who has a day off tomorrow. So anyway, so yeah, we're going to be having a look at Spratwaffler, which is a session IPA, three point seven percent ABV. 
And then we're having a look at Super Sprat, which is 7.4% uh, ABV. So we'll sort of be reviewing them on their own merits. And then we'll probably compare the two as well. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, the beers I've had so far uh, from the order that I made from Time and Tide have been really nice. Really, really nice. A lovely stout and also a uh, a really lovely um, Hell as well. The Hell's Beer was just fantastic. They re did a really good job on that Hell's Beer. You'll see those reviews uh, pop up at some point. So I'm noticing a bit of a delay between the comments showing up on my phone and on here. So I will just refer to this for now. So uh, Lucy Foster. Hello, wonderful. Uh, it says, oh, fucking hell, thought the link you sent me was going to be something good. Uh, no, that's never going to happen. And it's just a first trap at the end of the day. So I've tried to get two very similar looking glasses. The first one, obviously, was the one that I got for my order, the Time and Tide glass. And then one that my good friend Adam, aka Mosebeers, kindly gifted to me. Same shape glass, but the different sizes. So, do, 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 do. or are they actually? And this is just a little bit of a chunkier glass because it's got a bit more, a bit more weight to it. But um, yeah, so similar looking glasses. Just realised I haven't got the thumbnail for this video, so I'll have to do it afterwards. Didn't do any sort of like promotion on Instagram. Tagging time and tide in this, it's just a bit off the cuff, although I've been wanting to do this all day. Anyway, so without any further ado, we'll get these beers opened. Should only be a short stream, he says. Uh, so, first up is Sprat Waffler, which is brewed with Marisotta, Pilsner, Flaked Oats, Flaked Barley. Uh, hops are Citra, and the yeast is New England, IP, well, New England yeast. 3.7% ABV. And uh, I forgot that they don't put like a description of the beer on the can. So I think this is like the their most popular sort of core range beer. Um, let's see, see, I'm just getting like random comments showing up on this. I oh, know once you refresh it, it works. Never seen the never seen that Deal Hot Farm glass before. Says Craig. Um, I got it on the website. See, I was intending, because I know they were doing the pack, multi-packs of the um, the Deal Hot Farm stuff, where it says, like, a pack of six, and then obviously you can get 12, and then 24. Went on to that, even though it's showing six pack, went on there, couldn't pick a six pack of it, and I didn't really want to commit to 12 or 24 beers, basically four of the same of each. Not that I'm against that, because I've been buying um, quite a lot of, like, repeats, recently um falling in love with core ranges and stuff i mean sonoma from track uh, the cloud water ipas and pails um what else have i been doing you to always buy like four uh cans of heaven from northern monk at a time i'm starting to go off the idea of just buying like new beer all the time do you know what i mean um whereas if something's been rebrewed and i've really enjoyed it and i'm doing an order especially direct from the brewery, I'll just think, fuck it, I'll buy multiple cans of that. And I think that's, I don't know, I, I like that. I like that a bit more, especially when I'm buying from a brewery. I mean, got four of those coffee IPAs from Overtone, uh, which I've had one of them, and it was really nice, although I had a few beers beforehand, so I'm going to actually do a proper review of them. But um, yeah, so cut long story short, that's where I got the glass from. <clears throat> I was going to get just the, the regular sort of time and tide glass, but... I thought, no, I like this. I like the sort of double design and I like the concept and I want to promote stuff like the Deal Hop Farm, which is like community-based project where people just grow hops and the brewery will make a beer with them. I think that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, and then we've also got a comment from Paul, a.k.a. PA Brew News, who says, cheers, brother. Cheers to you too, Paul. Hope you're doing well. And, uh, yeah, got my jeans are dirty for no reason. But anyway, nobody cares. So we'll get Sprat Waffler opened first. And by the way, awesome artwork from Time and Tide with uh, a man riding a fish. Because why the hell not? 
So we'll use the carnival glass for this one. See, I think this is sort of like a, a beer that they do all the time. Um, from what I remember on the website, I think it's like one of their sort of like best sellers. So pretty much like core range. Dirty glass, I'm sure Craig will approve. Uh, but yeah, it looks looks like lemon cordial from here. The lights cut it really nice, which gives it a bit more of a deep sort of yellowy tone. And there's just a thin line in the head. Yeah, murky, looking very nice. It does look like freshly squeezed lemon juice. So, how am I going to do this? I can't remember. I'm going to do head to head. So, I like taste both beers. I don't know. But we'll see. I mean, it's smelling gorgeous already. And it's looking really nice. So, uh, we'll just taste them one by one first. I don't have any water to cleanse the palate either. Because I'm scum, basically. So, on the nose, it's just pure citra, pure joy. No wonder I've got messy jeans. That's an image no one needs to see. Oh, but yeah, it's soft, mellowy, citrus, a little bit of sweetness. Citra being one of my all-time favourite hops. But yeah, it just smells good. It literally smells like freshly squeezed orange juice. It's amazing. So we'll give it a little bit of a taste. Cheers, folks. Cheers all who are watching this. Don't know why you are, but do appreciate it. Yeah, and it's sort of like, it's simple. That's the first thing that comes into my head. It's just a really simple, shit tons of citra. Soft, relatively like bodied, but smooth at the same time. Smooth. That light there is doing my fucking head in. But only one sec. I don't need to see me awkwardly traipse over and turn it off. But you can still hear me, unfortunately. And I do apologise if I do make a grunt sound. No 31-year-old should be making old man grunts, but hey-ho. Is that any better? Aye, that'll do. It's not perfect, but nothing is, really, is it? Oh, excuse me. This is one of those beers where it's not going to blow you away. Do you know what I mean? It's not going to be like, whoa, or anything like that. But if you saw it on keg, or if you got it from the tap room, you'd be like, yeah, got to get this. You know, sort of like, um, what examples can I think of? Like if you went to Tracks tap room, Sonoma on cask, that sort of thing. It's got that sort of like quality to it. Nice little zingy sherbetty tone there. But yeah, that is really nice and satisfying. So before we get into the next one, I'll have a look at the comments. Uh, do, 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 do. So Lucy says hello to Paul. Paul says hello back. Craig says hello to both Lucy and Paul. Lucy says cheers. Heath drinks, gives me a wave. How are you doing, my friend? Um, love your content on Instagram, by the way. And then he says cheers. And then Paul says that's why I do beer reviews nude from the waist down, so you can so you can mess up your pants. I crack and groan and moan like a falling tree, brother. So, um, to address the uh, wearing no pants, unfortunately, I am wearing jeans today. Look at those skinny feminine legs for such a robust, <laughs> obese body. Um, and I've just seen on the playback that I put my leg up. Why did I do that? Got to get your leg up somehow. So, I crack and groan around like a falling tree. Uh, Peter, Peter Swift. How are you doing, Peter? I hope you're doing well, my friend. Uh, where did I get this glass from? Uh, it's from Carnival Brew. Brewing Company, or is it Brew Co? Brewing Company. Going to drop it. Um, yeah, my mate Adam from Maysbeers picked this up. Now, I don't know if Carnival do um, 
nationwide delivery, but it's a lovely little glass, very nice, simple logo. They do really nice artwork as well. But um, yeah, I, I do like this shape of glass. Although it gives me Vietnam like flashbacks to the, the two Northern Monk glasses that I had of this shape, which are both smashed. But um, yeah, definitely worth checking it out, Pete. Um, as I said, I'm not sure if they do uh, delivery, but if they do, the beers aren't too bad either. Uh, then, he's, then Craig says, uh, looking forward to seeing what you think of Super Sprat. Not had this batch, though. And then Paul says, me too, Craig. You didn't hashtag it, so it means nothing. But yeah, off to a good start with this. So then we're going over to Super Sprat, which uh, continues the theme of the man riding a fish, but he's about to fall off the fish. Um, didn't Scooter write a song about that? <laughs> humour. Shit humour. That's not even humour, but it's humour nonetheless. So this is, I think it's pretty, well, it's pretty much the same recipe. Marisata, Pilsner, flake oats, flake barley, um, just an abundance of citra, but they've got the ABV of 7.4%. So I think this is, this is basically, <laughs> excuse me, really gassy tonight. Uh, this is basically a souped up version of it. So we'll see what we get. With this one. And we will actually use the, uh, the time entire glass not doing this like because i've got preconceived notions that this beer is going to be better of course it just made sense to have the the smaller glass for the smaller beer and then the heftier glass for the heftier beer so that has poured pretty much the same although the uh the sesh version looks a little bit lighter although that looks this this one, now I'm looking. It's reversed the image on it on the viewfinder. Um, just getting the bearings, bear with me. Yeah, this looks lighter. And it looks lighter on camera. Um, but yeah, head, pretty much one finger's worth of a white soapy head, just like that one. Let's see if we've had any more comments. No. So... Let's see what we get on the nose with this. This has a bit more of a resiny, danker feel to it. Bitter shun. And it's got a little bit more of a... Um, it's not as vibrant in its sweetness as the, uh, I keep forgetting the names. Super, no, this is Super Sprat. The Sprat Waffler. Is that a nautical term? I don't know. I should know because of all the uh, nautical puns that we have on our little Facebook group. It's very sad, isn't it? Very, very sad. Yeah, it's got, this smells, really does smell. Like a, a pack of freshly opened round trees fruit pastels. Oh, it's even got that like tingly sugar aroma. Now I really want fruit pastels. But yeah, I don't know. This seems to have a little bit more of a like a mature oomph to it. I just can't get over the, the round trees fruit pastels. That's ridiculous. No, I don't know what I think of the aroma compared to that one. Anyway, one important thing is, what's it taste like? Cheers, folks. <clears throat> Naturally, it's got a bit more of a fuller body. A lot smoother, a little bit more oily. Yeah, there is definitely an, an edge of dankness to this that you don't get with the uh, Sprat Waffler. It has even like a, 
a little bit more bitterness on the back end. A little bit more herbal as well, I would say. But it's still just absolutely jam-packed full of beautiful, beautiful citra goodness. Uh, <clears throat> more ABV equals better. German thank you jokes for the win. Obviously, Paul. Natürlich. Ah, es ist sehr gut, ne? Super lecker. A bit more German there for you. I'm educational. Not when it comes to beer, but everything else. Yes, this stuff has got more oomph to it. A little bit more bite to it. And that bitterness on the back end um, is just... Oh, God, I'm so sorry. That's a tough one, which one I like more. Yeah, this one definitely got a bit more vibrancy to it. A little bit more sweeter. Hmm. <clears throat> I am at a moral quandary right now, or I have a moral quandary. I mean, I'm just going to put it out there, both of them are really, really nice. Um, and looks like I'm going to be ascending to the heavens any moment now, so I better make it quick, because uh, God does not like to wait. That being said, the Queen's still alive. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, I just keep clearing my throat. I mean, if you love the Citra Hop, you're going to really enjoy these. Both of them are really, really nice IPAs. Um, for a session IPA, it's not watery hop piss, which even now, a lot of session IPAs are just, don't do anything for me. But this is packed full of flavour and it's got a lovely body for its ABV. But I think... Out of the two, this just edges it for me. There's not much in it. Um, I'd be more inclined to get a four pack of the Sprat Waffler than I would be for the Super Sprat. See, now I'm thinking way too much into it. If I did another order from Time and Tide, which I probably will do, I'd probably pick up a four pack of this happily and then. To bulk up your order, I'd probably pick up two cans of this. Um, because I just I just love the citra hop. What can I say? And this showcases it beautifully. Uh, both IPAs work on their own merits. Um, but out of the two, this just edges it for me. Um, now, I don't usually subscribe to the notion that higher ABVs are better. Although a lot of the time they are, let's be honest. <clears throat> but this has still got a load of character for its ABV. <sighs> Excuse me. So before I get into my ratings, I'll have a look at the comments. Um, so Sprat Waffler is a nickname. Oh, Mr. Joke. Uh, Mr. Joke, Mr. Comment. Uh, make sure you cuvee them. They will be better together. You read my mind, Paul. I was actually going to turn the camera off and go get myself a small glass to do a cuvee. Um, Spark Waffler is a nickname for someone from Deal, apparently. News to me, says Lucy. And then the Queen is on speaking terms with baby Jesus. Lol, 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 lol. Well, he didn't. He did ha, 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 ha. I don't know why I said lol, 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 lol. Um, 
Craig says, a small town in East Kent. Uh, I think that is Deal. And then Paul says, I was right. Big ABV wins. And he's laughing to himself smugly. Which I uh, don't blame him. But, uh, yeah. I'm going to get a glass. And I don't want you to uh, see me stand up. Because I'm very self-conscious right now. I've got issues, okay? Leave me alone. Back in a sec. Now turn it off, you dickhead. There we go. And I'm back. Don't say that before you turn the camera back on. No bad. So, got myself a small Mikola tasting glass. I wonder what naughty words Sally's whispering to Henry right now. God only knows. And ironically, the Queen would never find out. See, I'm keeping joke. I'm linking jokes together. Anyway, so we've got the Sprat Waffler. So we'll pour a little bit there. Poured way more than I wanted to because I just wanted to enjoy it on its own. So we'll see if we can get the same. Don't know if that's 50-50. Colour obviously stays the same. Again, the, the, the lighting doesn't actually do any justice to what the beer actually looks like. It still looks like both of them look like pure lemon juice. Like pure lemon juice, lad. So, let's give it a bit of a swirl. <laughs> the citrus like magnified. That smells really good. That smells really, really good. That's strange how that's happened. Because I'd imagine it's the same... I imagine a different crop. But I don't know. I don't know if they brewed these side by side when they're doing the, the batches, but it's just pure citra. Just pure, pure citra. So uh, let's see what the uh, cuvee tastes like. Can you see that expert Cicerone level swizzle? I'm just rocking it left and right. So I developed a little bit more of a, a bitterness. I tell you what. You're getting the vibrancy of the Sprout Waffler, but you're getting the the oomph of the Super Sprat. But you're getting a fuck ton of Citra and it's absolutely magnificent. Hmm. A very good, a very good cuvee. I've been burned so many times with cuvees. It's not funny, but that works remarkably, remarkably well. So, quickly check the comments before I continue. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Paul says, interesting. I refuse to lol. Don't blame you. I'm a scumbag, so that's why I did it. Uh, hurry up, you plump turkey. I've got to do work. Cuvee, 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 cuvee. Nowhere near 50-50. It worked, didn't it? Such a fucking arse, Paul, but I love you to bits. So, um, yeah. Let's get them rated. I feel like having another beer or so after this, but I know I shouldn't. Not to a day off tomorrow. Fuck it, do you know what I mean? In times like this, live your life as best you can. That's all I'm going to say. Life is literally too short. And you've got a hell of a lot of time on your hands in these testing times. Which, um, I won't, won't go too much into the whole C word, but all I say is, Boris Johnson, I know you're watching because you're a big fan of my beer reviews because we look alike. Um, you're a bit of a cunt, mate. 
I actually wrote a very insulting comment on his uh, official Facebook page, which I think got immediately deleted, but that's democracy. I've got a right to be abusive to my um, politicians. I might send um, a politician a death threat by by tweet. No, because I don't have Twitter. Plus, don't want to get arrested. So, winner, winner, chicken dinner, says Paul. He says also, cheers, brother, lady and gents. Off to work. Kisses. Kisses straight back to you. And then uh, Lucy says, big love, Paul. Stay rad. Uh, Mosby says, love the sh Croatian flag shirt and, they, and the live review on a Monday. Hello, Adam. Big shout out to uh, Adam, who kindly uh, gifted me this lovely little carnival glass. Yeah, I do look like a Croatian international from 1996. Uh, so Paul sends a lot of black hearts. Uh, then Craig says, cheers, brother Paul. Smiley face, thumbs up. And then Mersey Beers Adam says, cheers, Paul, Craig and Lucy. And then Lucy says, cheers, Adam. Smiley face. So, yeah, to conclude this wonderful, wonderful live review, possibly the best work that I've done. The Super Sprat just edges it. But that being said, you know you're making a proper point when you do that with your hands. That being said, I would probably lean to buying um sprat waffler uh god how fucking stupid am i do you know what i mean i've repeated these names so many times and i keep forgetting um but yeah sprat waffler i'd probably be more inclined inclined should i just end this stream now because quite frankly my brain's just shut off for no reason whatsoever um, but yeah, I'd probably be inclined more doing that to a beard that I don't have. Stop doing that, Peter. I'd probably be more inclined to buy more Sprat Waffler, but for a little bit more of a treat, I would probably pick Super Sprat over Sprat Waffler. And if people are watching this now who have no idea of beer, first of all, why are you watching? You think, what the fuck is he going on about Sprats? Is that like a very, very cockney way of saying sprouts? <laughs> you fucking prick. So yeah, ratings. I would give the Sprat Waffler a very solid 8 out of 10. Super Sprat, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. And, yeah, the first, as someone who loves Citra Hops, both of these beers are just great examples of how to utilise that hop, which has always been a classic. It always will be. But this is how you use Citra in an IPA. It really, really is. Both of them are really, really good. Um, highly recommended for both of them. But, um, yeah, and they will definitely be beers that I would add to um, a future Time and Tide order because um, I've not had a, a Citra-based beer that's had such a, a profound effect on my experience. Um, you even get acting with my live reviews. I've got the most stagnant beer review channel out of my group. And I deserve it. Anyway, but yeah, both of them really, really good. Um, I will be putting the uh, link to the Time and Tide web shop in the description. Shouldn't on it beforehand. Um, but hey-ho, that's just the way it goes. Um, do I class this as two reviews or do it as one review? So I can get the, the catalogue number sorted for the reviews i don't know those questions that i shouldn't be asking on a live stream nor should i be wasting 
any notion of thought on them. So, uh, yeah, both of them are really good. If you love Citra, check them out. Uh, go check out Time and Tide. Um, highly recommended. I will be buying more beers from these guys. And, um, yeah, I've still got a few to go, and I'm looking forward to all of them. So, quick look through the comments. Um, do, 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 do. I'm sure Lucy will absolutely love me stretching out this... Get your mind out the gutter, stretching out this um, end of the video. So, Adam is drinking a Salvatore you gave me, Double Bock Monday. That's a good fucking beer. That is a really good fucking beer. Um, and he corrected himself by saying Doppelbock. Unnecessary, but appreciated. Uh, Craig says, cheers, Adam, mate. I made myself laugh. That's so fucking stupid. Uh, Lisa says, cheers all. I'm going to neck my apple juice. Hardcore Monday evening over here, obviously. Uh, it gives the horns a black heart and a moi. And then Mersey, I why do I keep calling you Mersey Beers? Rob, first name basis. Adam says, I want to see Peter and Raggy joint live review. One beer review would be equal to three hours of tangents. <laughs> we'll have to get that sorted. Uh, Lucy kind of reminds me to get a uh, thumbnail with them lovely legs. There you go. And uh, then Craig says, Cheers, Lucy. Only talk soon. And then Lucy says, Cheers, Craig. So, yeah, thank you for uh, watching this. Again, I question the reasons why you would watch something like this. Um, but do me a favour. Go check out Time and Tide. The link will be in the description. If you see any of their beers on your, you know, your favourite web shop or your local bottle shop, give them a try. It's it, this. This is the one saving grace of um, this situation that we find ourselves in. It's about you know giving breweries local and national just a little bit of support. And um, yeah, when the brewing beers like this, they've got a repeat customer with me definitely. And the beers that I've had prior to this, which always in that direction apparently. But I mean, have two absolutely cracking utilizations of Citra, both great IPAs in their own right. But I think the uh, the double IPA just about edges it. But it's one of those ones where I probably end up drinking more of the Sprat Waffler just because of how that ABV and how tasty it is. And um, yeah, I'd love to love to try this on tap. So uh, we'll have to uh, get that sorted. Uh, anyone in the Kent area. Um, although I'm terrible with strangers. Um, one story before we uh, end this live stream. The only time I've ever been noticed. Well, I've been noticed a few times by brewers when I've been to festivals and stuff like that. But I mean, I'm no Rob from Hopscene who gets fucking harassed whenever he's out at a tap room or a festival, but a story that sticks in my mind I was in Manchester meeting up with Rob and um, having a few drinks, going to different places. As I was walking to meet Rob, this, this guy who was with a few people who I assumed were his friends. Now bear that in mind. And um, he just, like, shouted me, and it's like, like, oh, you're the clueless drinker. And I was like, yes, very awkwardly, because I cannot, I cannot handle those situations. Why be on YouTube? I don't know. Um, so I thought nothing of it. I was like, oh, that's nice. Oh. So then I met Rob. I think we were at um, Grub. And then we went to a few places, and uh, we bumped into that same guy in Wonder Beyond. And uh, we were having a talk with him. He sort of, like, um, attached himself. Not literally. It wasn't one of those situations. Uh, he attached himself to me and Rob, and we were talking. 
he was strangely argumentative um, about everything we were discussing. And uh, so we asked, oh, so we were friends, we were friends, you know, when he, he came in, he goes, oh, no, I thought I'd come on my own because uh, in Wonder Beyond's tap room, they were doing a beer yoga session. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, so I just hung around with, you, with a few people. And we're like, oh, cool. Good way to meet people. Hell will freeze over before I step anywhere near a fucking beer yoga event, by the way. So we'll talk to this guy. And he goes up to the bar. And like, Rob, <laughs> sorry, he's fucking weird him. And uh, in Wonder Beyond's sort of like on-site tap room, there's one toilet. Um for you know unisex toilet um god that i imagine that'd be absolute hell um under a, a tier system um it was hell back then there was a queue and the alphabet brewing company were like next door a couple of doors down because they were under one of the railway arches by the way i'm terrible at telling stories and uh, so rob goes into there and he's gone for quite a while this guy comes back I'm talking to him. Everything I'm saying, he's got something to say about what I've just said. And uh, so he goes off again. And I just see, I see Rob sort of like peek his head round the uh, the wall. And uh, he like slowly comes up to me and goes, let's fucking go to track right fucking now. And I was like, where the fuck have you been? I thought you only went to the toilet because, no, I had to get a drink in alphabet. I was like, you absolute bastard. But I'd have done the same to avoid that situation, to be fair. We're not all perfect. And uh, yeah, we we literally, literally, and I hate people who say literally, but we literally ran off away from this guy and went to track. So a uh, bit of an anticlimactic ending to that story, but. He was a very strange man. And uh, he even <laughs> sent me a message on Instagram asking where we went. So I think I just like spun the lie of, oh, no, we had to go because the train was coming. Oh, sorry, we didn't say bye. But um, do you know what it reminded me of, kind of? You know, an Alan Partridge where he sort of like, gets to know that super fan of his and then he like plays him off as like his agent or something and then he drives back to his house he's just got like alan partridge stuff all over the house that <laughs> comes out of the mask and his undies that's what it kind of reminded me of and uh so fucking immature but uh there's no way that i could uh, we could have stayed in that situation and we were shitting ourselves because we'd mentioned we were going to track after Wonder Beyond, which had a very awkward conversation with uh, one of the, the people who I think actually works for Wonder Beyond, because I was wearing my Cannibal Holocaust t-shirt, and then as he's pouring me a beer, he's like, oh, Cannibal, what a great film. And then I started going into like, details about like how wonderful that film was. And then he just started going, all oh, right, yeah. And then just awkwardly pour my pint. And I walked off and I was like, oh, can I have one of those badges? But it was like, yeah, okay. And I took a badge out of spite. So that's my story, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you meet some weird people <laughs> through doing this. But, um, yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll, that's the end of the the uh, head-to-head. Uh, Super Sprat just about edges it. He said 50 times already. So, uh, last couple of comments. Lucy says, I really hope he watches this. And then the legend that is Jimmy, o Jimmy O'Neill, the Wigan Joker. Or would that be the artist formerly known as the Wigan Joker? Uh, the Jimmy O Show says, I thought I'd just check in, Peter. I hope you're doing well, Jimmy. Very much looking forward to uh, being part of the podcast again. When we do our mukbang. So, uh, by the way, if people 
are interested, you can go check out. It was the first podcast that um, Jimmy did. He's had much more interesting people on since then, obviously. But uh, yeah, if you want to see me on a on a, on a podcast, then uh, go check out the Jimmy O show. If I remember to do so, I'll put the link down below. But I'll definitely remember to put the uh, the Jimmy O show channel in the description because there's uh, some really really good podcasts. Some guests who you don't really see on podcasts, which I like. Bit of a plug right now. Um, but yeah, go check out the Jimmy O show. Uh, go search on YouTube. Some really interesting stuff. And he's a fucking legend. And um, yeah, that's my uh, final thoughts. And Jimmy said, will happen, sir. It definitely will. And I very much look forward to it. Anyway, folks, I've nearly been at 50 minutes. I'm going to end this one here. Um, if you've tried these beers, obviously let me know your thoughts, opinions. Go check out Time and Tide in the description. Uh, really worth your time. And uh, yeah, cheers for watching. And I might do these if I've got any other sort of like head to heads um, in the future. Anyway, thank you all for watching on the live stream and anybody who watches this once it's been uploaded. And a uh, quick comment before uh, we go. The first podcast was like the first Bruce Lee film, Meet the Big Boss. Raw but intense. Exactly. That's exactly how I put it. And he goes, Good night, mate, and see you soon. You too, Jimmy, and uh, good night, everyone else. And this is the part where I can't judge how long it actually takes for a stream to end. Craig is saying night, mate. Uh, night to you too, buddy. So I'm going to press end now, but it doesn't end straight away because you've got to press end. Before.